it was time to take the adventures on the road. So today I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona at Piastua Peak, and we are gonna climb this bad boy. All right, so this is actually my first time hiking, so you are about to go on this journey with me. Uh, I gotta say, this is way different from Florida. Um, it is nice seeing uh, elevation. Not everything's flat like Florida. And uh, just, it's really beautiful. Uh, cactus, rocks, rocks and cactus. Bring lots of water, definitely, it can dry you out. So for whatever I line, this first part of the trail is where you have most of your heavy breathing. Um, it's a pretty steady incline, a mix of like rocks and cement. All the trails are clearly marked. We'll be taking a summit trail and going to the top. I'm trying to watch you guys and trying to watch my footing at the same time is difficult. All right, so being from Florida, where everything is flat, this is a bit of a challenge for me. You really gotta watch this trail because parts of it have broken up and washed out. And you don't need climbing gear or sticks or anything. And there's downtown Phoenix over there. Uh, this is really cool. There's this uh, nice wall going up. And uh, the trail was established in 1930, I believe. And it was originally called Squaw Peak. And the name was changed to Piastawa Peak to honor the first female Native American soldier killed in active combat. All right, so hiking tip for new hikers, feel free to stop and take breaks. Uh, that's the nice thing about this trail. There are several flat spots where you can just stop, take a little break and keep going. Definitely watch your step, because one little slip and you know, won't be that fun. So as far as uh, wildlife, there's rattlesnakes here, which I'm used to. Uh, of course, I have Eastern Diamondbacks in Florida, along with pygmy rattlesnakes. Uh, here, I believe, is the Western Diamondback. Scorpions and tarantulas, of course. Actually, I think right now the tarantulas are migrating, so I might see some of them. And this park in particular has uh, bobcats, coyotes, and apparently Gila monsters, which would just be really cool to see as long as I don't get bit. There are other trails uh, throughout the park, so just keep an eye on where you're going. That way you don't get lost. So all the sites I visited recommend that you give yourself about an hour to get up and about 40 minutes to get back down. The trail is 1.2 miles from the base to the summit, and there's a change in elevation of 1,200 feet. I believe the top is at 2,400. I'm sure I'll see when I get up there. Okay, so I have a tip for you. You're gonna to get to a spot where you see tan white rocks. Very slippery. So if you see this light color versus this gray, try to avoid it because I, I, I almost took a spill. All right, so the trail does get narrow in spots. And you have hikers of all experience levels coming up here. So what is nice is if you wanna stop and like take a call, take a break, shoot video, they do have these little flat spots that you can just step, you know, really right off this curb and just stand there carefully, take a break. That way you're out of the way for this very narrow trail coming down. All right, so quick note I just noticed, if you are on the shorter side, like say five foot or under, there are gonna be a few spots which are a bit of a challenge. And even if you work out a lot in kayak, you're gonna get tired. All right, so when I say watch your footing, these rocks are very sharp and jagged. So if you slip and hit your knee on that, you could get cut really easily. Okay, so I got to this juncture. Main trail goes that way, but this part here kind of goes over to that really interesting looking rocks. I'm gonna head that way. Looks like uh, that part you could take down and kind of get into that canyon there. If you bring your water bottles, don't leave trash on a mountain. That's just stupid. 
find a little tree friend, and give him the water, take it out with you. Come on, guys. All right, guys, so here's one of those spots I was mentioning. Uh, it's pretty level, and then you come to here, and that's about two and a half feet. So if you're five foot, it might be a bit difficult to try to find some of these lower areas to walk around those obstacles. All right, so I was just told that I'm about at the halfway point. It's a workout. I mean, luckily, it's September 30th, so the hottest time of the year is already over. It's getting nicer out. Um, also, it is about 4.30 in the afternoon. Sun sets at 6.20, so it should be cooling down here pretty soon. We're gonna come along the trail and you get to uh, this pretty cool rock formation. That seems to be about the halfway point. Uh, right next to it are some rocks that have quite a bit of red in them. And there's some pretty cool cactus over here. So it's also good to come this time of day because the sun is setting behind the mountain. So you're gonna get spots in the trail where you can get a little bit of shade and cool off because that sun is very unforgiving. So another tip when you're hiking here, uh, keep anything expensive in the hand farthest from, from the drop. Water bottles over here instead of the GoPro. So don't wanna drop it, but I'm not gonna jump all the way down there just to rescue it. This is the junction I heard about online where people get confused. Uh, so you see the sign for Freedom Trail 302, and over there's a little post 300 for the summit. So Freedom Trail, as you can see, starts to head back down, and the summit one keeps going up. So it shouldn't be that confusing. Uh, if you're going up, you're going in the right direction. More uh, difficult climbing right here if you're on the shorter side. Wow, so when you get up here, you're basically seeing the back side of the mountain that you can't see before now. This area down here is off limits. Uh, there is some restoration in progress, so do not head down there. All right, so I had to take a break. <laughs> when the sun's beating down on you and the terrain's a bit rough, uh, it could be a bit difficult. <laughs> so when you find a shady spot and you're hot, take a break. Uh, dehydration and heat stroke can really sneak up on you. I have a like one liter bottle here. Probably like a third of this is gone. And I had a small Gatorade before I got up here. What's really cool are these chipmunks. This guy is like, what up chipmunk? Not for your people. Chipmunk. Gotcha. Trying to sneak up on me. I don't have any snacks for you. Plus, I don't know what even feed chipmunks. Another good part about taking a break is to take in the view. The views change as you go up the mountain, so it's not just about the summit, it's about every step of the way. You know, it's kind of like life, it's about the journey, not the goal. I don't care who you are, that chipmunk's adorable. He's got a little friend back there. Scurrying around, what up buddy? Yeah, down there's the park. City of Phoenix manages the trail, uh, as well as the park. What I find really interesting are all the different colors of rocks. Yeah, there's like reddish brown through here, and then it gets pretty light and then very dark. Uh, over here it gets red. So there are two main places to hike in Phoenix. Uh, one is the Camelback Mountain, which has the highest peak, and the other one is Piastawa. Definitely don't have views like this back home. So there was a slight turn in the trail. Uh, you follow it around to the left, and it's a bit deceiving because it goes down for a minute, which gives you a little break, and then it levels out right here, which is pretty nice. At this point, the steps you see have actually been carved into the mountain. Uh, so the first part of the trail, I think the first third of it, from what I read, had uh, steps that were placed there, combination of like cement, concrete, rebar, and these here are actually carved out. Now some of these stones might be placed because I'm seeing mortar. Check out all the cactus. So I'm at that point where having to like mentally tell myself to keep going. This is hard for this Florida boy. Luckily they have little benches along the way I take a break at. And every time you think you're close, you just look up. You're like, no, I'm not close yet. That looks about as far away as it did when I started. Yeah, so going from 100% humidity to 
I don't know, zero. The southwest is definitely different from the southeast. So I stopped and took about a five minute break. And the problem is I'm dizzy. And I think it's because I am used to, you know, sea level. Um, Phoenix ground level is already a thousand feet above sea level and this is 2,000 on top of that. So the air is thinner already. Heart rate has probably been getting up in like the 160s. So I'm just pacing myself at this point. I think I only have about 20 more minutes to the top. All right, at this point there's some handrails. So <laughs> it does get pretty steep. So it just got really windy. So I think that means almost there. Yeah, this part here you actually have to climb quite a bit steeper right here. All right, so here we are at the top of Piastawa Peak. Made it. Definitely worth the trek up here. Uh, it cools down a lot because of the breeze and it really is just beautiful up here. If you look over this way, got some rainfall coming. It's getting closer, so I'm gonna probably start heading back. So we're headed back down now, and although down is easier than up, you still don't want to rush yourself. You want to be safe, especially if your knees and legs have about had it at this point, just take your time. If you do happen to use a handhold as you go, just give them a quick check. Don't want to accidentally stick your hand inside of something's home. And I'm trying to get back rather quickly because I have an event to go to in like an hour. That should be all right. Okay, these handholds really come in handy on the way back down. On the way up, if you fall, you fall forward, you know, into where you're already going. If you fall on the way back, you fall down and you just start sliding and rolling. And I'm not always the most coordinated guy, so I could easily slip and just keep going. Nice though is these uh, little steeper spots on the way up were a bit tricky. But on the way down, they're kind of nice to you know, jump from rock to rock as you go. So although gravity's on your side on the way down, it feels like uh, footing matters a lot more. Uh, most of these steps are, you know, cut right into the mountain or just solid rock, but then you're gonna have loose gravel and stones on top of them. Uh, so if you happen to slip on one of those, your heels will go up, you're just gonna go right down. And you get the spots like this where the steps are not very defined. So you really gotta watch it. This seems to be a very popular time of day to go. I think because it's cooled off now. Um, but I'm seeing a lot more people on the way down than on the way up earlier. I think it's rain, but it's like this reddish hue. And I noticed that in the clouds coming up too, so it could just be dust that gets kicked up and then rains back down. I really don't know. But sunset is really beautiful here. Hyastawa Peak, unlike Camelback Mountain and Echo Canyon, uh, does not allow for horseback riding, uh, dogs, or drones. So keep that in mind when you come here. Uh, all the drone footage I shot, I was not on the trail, I was off. Um, and I try not to get too close to the trail, mountains, or the hikers. Piastawa Peak is open from, I want to say 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Now the parking closes around 7 p.m. Uh, but you can still park elsewhere or get a lift or Uber like I did and hike this thing at night. Uh, it's very popular for night hikes. Piastawa Peak, Phoenix, Arizona. Definitely worth the hike. I'm gonna say if you're visiting Phoenix, if you're only here for a short while, uh, put this on your to-do list. It is definitely a, a moderate to difficult hike. You're gonna be tired, 
pack lots of water. Check out the uh, City of Phoenix's website, the official one, because they'll tell you what to expect on the trail and give you tips as far as what to bring with you and what's allowed and what's not. If you like this video, please give me that thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. Until next time, keep having adventures.